know, sometimes people, they, they praise their wives. I just don't. I only say the truth. <laughs> She's beautiful inside. She's beautiful outside. As you are driving, I see an accident taking place. And I'm talking about a car that has a, a, a car plate like B, C, E, 4119. Yeah, that's our car. Hey, Akaparata. When you don't have a mentor, your prophetic level is not where you're supposed to be. So I prayed with her, I unlocked her in the prophetic. And right now she she can show me. She is Lily Jana. Follow Lily Java on Facebook and Instagram. Feel your
God bless everybody watching me. This is Prophet Passion. I am excited to have everybody watching. I know we have been waiting for such a day like this, and I never did uh, outer teachings before. So I strongly believe that this teaching is about to catapult you to another level. It is about to take you into another dimension, and I know that I know that God is about to bring a mighty turnaround over people's lives. Uh, I was in prayer today before I left my room and the Lord was ministering to me that through this broadcast, lives are going to be changed. People are going to be touched. People are going to witness the mighty power of God, the mighty hand of Jehovah. It's going to be super sport or speedy, speedy or end. You are going to witness the mighty hand of God, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, and mighty things are going to take place. I want you to pray wherever you are for the next two minutes, and this be your prayer. Lord, open my ear. Lord, open my ear. Let him who hears an ear hear what the Spirit says to the church. God is about to speak to you. You must have a prophetic ear to hear what God is about to say. So if you have your offering of the day, go to the website prophetperson.com and give the Timothy Kaseke, my son in Zimbabwe, bless you. Michel Candelis, bless you. Tapio Moyo, bless you. And Emily Showard, bless you. Marima Fatudin, bless you. I see a lot of people on Facebook. Share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we are live right now also on periscope i see ruth prado i see uh, different people elaine buani bless you for your offering revelation p bless you for being here on periscope god bless everybody that is uh live with us right now invite someone love world love word bless you for joining on periscope everybody who is here i want you to share the broadcast and i want you to pray let this be your prayer now your prayer is lord open my ear that i may be able to hearken to what the spirits are saying to me right now god is about to speak to you a word that will change your life for good so quickly those that have a special offering of the day you have a 50 dollar offering a 10 dollar offering whatever you can give go to the website prophetpassion.com and give the best as we're going to say, play hosanna song i want you to i want you to be praying pray and share the broadcast pray share the broadcast pray share the broadcast something huge something powerful is about to happen in your life in jesus mighty name as we play the song i want you to pray i want you to give i want you to be ready for our live session god bless you amen My eyes are open 
with your God for by my side. I see your kingdom coming in your love. I abide. You assure me what I seek, I will find. Filled with all your glory, from the ashes I will rise. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. We serve a mighty living God. And God is going to bless you, God is going to empower you. Someone is asking how do we register for one-on-one. -on -one? You go to the website prophetpassion.com. I think if you check on this right uh, in red, red line underneath the video, it gives you all the information. You go to the website prophetpassion.com and you click one on one and you register there. Amen. And I pray that God will bless everybody watching me all over the world right now. We are on KTV, we are on Facebook, we are on Periscope, and we will be going. Uh, uh, we are also on Twitter and YouTube. And uh, we are believing to be using these videos in um in other tv stations in, in, in especially next year when we go there amen so i want you quickly to go to the book of acts chapter number two acts chapter number two we are talking about outers today acts chapter number two miyada abayase miyabaya sonto baye acts chapter number two I'm going to read Acts chapter number, no, not Acts 2, Acts chapter number 4. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 says, Acts 2 verse 42 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, underline apostles' doctrine. I will come with a teaching where I'm going to teach you the apostles' doctrine and the prophets' doctrine and the doctrine of Christ. The Bible speaks of those three doctrines, the doctrines of the apostles, the doctrine of the prophets, and the doctrine of Christ. So we have a doctrine of Christ, then we have a doctrine of the apostles. But Acts chapter 2 verse number 42 is speaking of the doctrine of the apostles. Doctrine of the apostles and the fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers so we have three major keys fellowship breaking of bread and prayers fellowship if you are right write it down fellowship breaking of bread and prayers these are three major keys in which you must understand three major things and then we are going to go to the book of judges 
the book of judges we are dealing with gideon judges chapter number 6 judges chapter number 6 Rabade lemos satalabadiate. Prem, Green Prem got it right. And Green Prem is our pastor in India, in our church in India. And um, I'm going to call him, he's going to share with us how evil outers are, 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 are created and mended in India. Uh, Sean Williams, God bless you. Zerian Brown, bless you for your offering. So this Judges chapter 6 is, is long, but I'll explain it. This is a story where God visited Gideon through an angel. And when the angel visited Gideon, Gideon said, how shall I know you're an angel? Because he was expecting a big man, white, shining with big wings. And a big voice saying, I am the angel of God. But they came an angel in form of a human being, uh, in form of, he was just normal. So he questioned the angel, said, how shall I know you are the angel of God? And the angel of the Lord says, bring an offering. You want to know I'm, a, I'm an angel, bring an offering. When he gave the, 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 the offering, that moment he gave an offering, automatically the angel began to shine. The glory began to manifest from the angel. And wow, he was shocked. And number two, the Lord said to Gideon, what is the matter? And this is the new the, the story is we have suffered so long we are praying to you god and you are not answering god what shall we do and this was god's answer now god's answer is how long have you suffered he said for seven years we have suffered as the nation of israel for seven years he said all right what you are going to do you are going to get a kettle And you are going to put it on the outer. You went and took an, uh, a kettle. And God says it has to have seven years. Since you have suffered for seven years. Moment he placed it on the outer. The Lord answered the, the outer. And when God answered the outer. There was a change. Okay the question is. Was Israel praying for the past seven years? Yes. Why is it this case, the problem, the situation never changed for seven years? Why is it it never changed for seven years when we know? When we know that uh -uh, for seven years we are praying Your situation is changing and we know that God answers prayer. How come I was praying and my situation never changed? And when God begins to speak to me now, God speaks and he says, How long have you suffered? Seven years. Go and take a kettle, which have seven years, place it on the altar. When he placed it on the altar, the problem stopped. The case is no longer there. Come on, God. What are you talking about, God? I've been in church for seven years. I've been praying for seven years. I can't give birth. I'm barren. Lord, I've been praying in church for seven years. Someone is saying, I'm not married. I'm now approaching 39 years old now. No marriage, no relationship. God, what's happening to me? Another one is a pastor saying, I've been doing ministry for over 15 years. We have about 50 members. 
and we only have one branch. But when God spoke to me, he said, I'm a man of all nations. What's happening to me? There is stagnation because that devil have food Christians. That it is in prayer that you remove a case. It is in prayer that you change situations. It is in prayer that God gives you money. It is in prayer that God gives you a husband. It is in prayer that the altars of your forefathers are broken. It is in prayer that a tribal case is broken. No. The devil had told Christians that the death of Jesus on the cross, he died for all your problems to, to, be, to be over. He died that you will never have HIV. He died that this and that will happen. But no, Duanis Ramirez, bless you for your offering. But I want you to understand this. Step number one, Motusi Sehume, bless you for your offering. Step number one, the reason why Jesus died on the cross is because he became the last sacrifice on the altar in the realm of sin only in the realm of sin only jesus died on the cross for our salvation jesus did not die on the cross that if i sleep around i will not have hiv did that jesus did not die on the cross to break generational cases that is why you see even him being on the cross he pronounced and he declared a generational case he said don't cry for me but weep for yourselves and your children and your children's children come on our children are not yet born our children's children are not yet born why should we cry for them you should cry for them because what you are doing to me you have released a case to you and it those in your bloodline that is why you see angela scare bless you tell me for your offering that is why you see that many people are in a place where the grandfather is a teacher the father is a teacher you are a teacher and obviously a child that you are about to born you are, you are, you are about to give birth shall be a teacher why because the generational case has not yet been broken generational cases are not broken by receiving jesus in your heart generational case is not broken by prayer generational case is not broken by fasting i will call one guy there is a guy those in zimbabwe they know if you know this guy in zimbabwe you type here there's a guy big guy in zimbabwe called nyandoro Nyandoro. He was what we call Shikiro in the satanic realm. In Zimbabwe, those in Zimbabwe, they understand this language I'm talking about. He was a Shikiro. I would say more than a Sangoma. More than what we call a Nganga in Zimbabwe. Those that are Zimbabwe, they understand what I'm talking about. And that guy came to a place where from the age of five he was introduced into the satanic world hmm. under this earth there's a world under the sea that you see there's a world he was taken into indian ocean when he was five he never knew about oceans but at the first time he entered into the ocean and he knew it's indian ocean he dipped himself in and he found himself entering into a world with a sun with a moon where it can be day, it can be night, there are clothes, there are food. And he got to be trained to become a powerful Satanist under the sea. Under the sea. There is another lady, if you follow my ministry for years now, you, if you go even and track on Facebook, you see a lady that came with, a, with two papers, HIV negative, HIV positive, she had HIV for years. And we prayed and healed her and delivered her from satanism she was taken when she was 15 years by a maimed physically the first one was taken spiritually his spirit was taken when he was asleep but this lady now she was taken physically she was a sangoma of our past president she was a sangoma for a lot of artists in zimbabwe 
she was a sangoma for a lot of people until she came to our church. Oh, she just texted me right now. I'm gonna call her. I was trying to call her to tell her that I will be live with you so I can get to ask a question and stuff. What happened is she was taken and she lived in that world under the world and she came back to, to the living. And she was prophesying deep. She would do things. There's a day she was in a, what we call a combi in Zimbabwe. And when they were driving that car, that vehicle, the minibus, she told them, stop. When we reach that place, we are going to have an accident and people are going to die. And people said, she's crazy. She said, stop and let me, drop me here. When she came out, maybe she'll call me back. When she came out and followed with another transport, the exact thing happened. Call me back. She was powerful to an extent that we took time to deliver her from that satanic world. But both of their testimonies are the first one I'll call him, his name is Nyandoro. He says, when he was in the satanic realm, there are even Christians that were coming to his shrine. There are pastors that were coming to ask for power from him. People in Zimbabwe don't know him. He's, he was powerful before we delivered him. And he said, what shocked me when I came to Christ is that the Bible you have is our Bible in the satanic world. When he was five, he was taken under the, 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 the earth realm. And there, that's where he read the Bible, where he was taught under there. And when he was taught underneath there, he said, Mammoths, they have got the tail of a fish, but when they get in that world, they have got legs. So there was one mammoth that would teach him. And he said, the same Bible you read is our same Bible. It's only that way it's written Jesus. It's written Satan. That's how the devil have, have destroyed uh, the mind of people that believe in him. They use the same Bible, but where it's written Messiah. The Messiah is not Jesus. In their world, they speak of their Messiah as Satan. Where it's written Jesus is Satan. So the same stories, the same everything, but Satan. He was shocked when he started reading the Bible. He knows scriptures right now more than a lot of people. Not because of the Bible he read, and it made sense to me how the devil would quote scriptures before Jesus. So he said, We make altars and the easiest people to destroy are Christians. Because Christians, they don't even build altars, they don't follow those principles. That devil up to now is making, is still making us to make altars to put human beings to die. I know Christians cannot put human beings for sacrifice. But that does not destroy, prayer cannot destroy an altar. It takes an altar to destroy an altar. It takes an altar to destroy an altar. Now, on the altar of the devil, in India, the way they build it in India is different from Africa. Africa is different from anywhere around the world. But I'm going to call my son here, who is my pastor in Chennai, India. And he's going to tell you how Juju people, Vuju people, do their witchcraft in... Uh, hey son, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm fine, Papa. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are live with me on Facebook and Periscope. Yeah. Yes, Papa. I'm listening to you, Papa. I want you to share how how how, how Satanist uh, the Juju people in in India practice their witchcraft to be witch people. Yeah, Papa. Like you know, they start their uh, they start their day at the night, like at ten o'clock or something like that. They will be ready for their job, like they have a time for the whole. Friend. Yes, they have a time frame. They start in the night at 10 o'clock, 10.30, they start their work. Every day, night. They collect Every all day. the information. At the 10th Yes, bro. Yes, mm -hmm. Papa. 10.30, mm -hmm. they just collect all the information of what they have to do for that particular day. And they just collect money from people and things like that. So what 
apart from money what they collect is they collect the hair of the person whom they are going to do uh witchcraft and things like that they, they collect, collect hair. hair yeah they collect the hair human hair mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. they collect the they, they 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 collect the mud of the person uh or, of the person like you know the, the mud of the person when they, if they would have walked or something like that they would have, they would just collect the mud of the person uh, whom they are targeting to uh, do witchcraft mm-hmm. apart from that they also do uh, they also uh, collect the clothes of the person um, and all, all these things they just use it to do witchcraft powerful powerful uh i'm going to teach people but there are people that are also hearing from india tell us exactly where can they find you in china india in the oh, papa, like, you know, we, we, yeah, we have just started a fellowship of kingdom embassy india here at chennai it's in kill park garden it's in chennai chennai mm-hmm. india it's in the south part of what you can also do is to text it on a, on a, on the facebook live and periscope so those in india can be blessed Yes papa I'll do it papa. All right. God bless you. Yeah. Thank thank you so much. Love you sir. This is a uh, Green Prem is our pastor in India. We recently started a branch there. I will be visiting soon. And Satanist. I don't know how you call them in your languages. In Africa we call them Juju people or Sangoma or Nganga. Uh, here they are called uh, Obia men or or sidekicks or fortune tellers and they all different names according to to countries and stuff like that but in india they have a daily routine for outers on every outer to balance in the satanic kingdom they take money and they need the hair of the person you are bewitching and the information of the person including the name or the face of a person and they speak words and take your hair and put it in fire whatever they have spoken if they say die and you are not in Christ you will die if you don't have Jesus to protect you you die if they say lose your job you lose your job if they say and these things are you these things are you these things are you then they come to a place where they will say uh they will come and they will say to someone else if it's in africa now i'll call the one in africa this one i personally delivered him from the satanic world he had a ring a, a, a ring that manifested physically it was a spiritual ring which he was placed when he graduated under the sea when we were praying and anointing the lord says anoint his, his finger with oil when we pray we cried in the name of jesus and we were we struggled and struggled until the lord spoke to me and he says anoint the finger with oil when i anointed it the, the, the ring manifested physically it took us time to remove it we removed it when we took a break because we would make him eat and bath and come back for deliverance was it was a session after session when we prayed for him he took shower the ring disappeared in the room while he was not in the room when he came back the ring was still on him we had to break covenants that we met we had to pray we had to declare we had to move things why these things i'm talking about they are real these things are real these things are real are boda basande Many people in in Zimbabwe don't know him Labora Masande He would tell you how they would make altars how they would kill people how they would sacrifice people how it, it, it's a world that when he came to Christ he was shocked by how people are praying without a sacrifice they spend it 2 minutes on the out all they have to do is to speak hmm maybe it's not available la brocha da bahade bagunda so i'm telling you these things so that you may uh please call me whenever you get the chance to call 
they they have uh, they have two minutes to speak on the outer and after two minutes it's done christians spend seven hours in prayer and they don't even make an altar or a sacrifice now sacrifice number one it's a place it is a place or it is a person an altar it's a place or it's a person in the old testament the genesis of altars was recorded firstly starting with cain and abel when cain and abel sacrificed they sacrificed because they physically built a place to put an offering a sacrifice point you need to understand is you don't offer anywhere they have to be a specific place to give that is why it, that place becomes a portal between heaven and earth in the satanic kingdom if this nyandora was going to answer he will tell you they make sacrifices of human beings through accidents yearly so at night they will go to in the main road at a specific place they sacrifice and they spew blood and they open a portal so when people are driving every friday of this month of this on this they've got specific dates which they will speak and when people are driving they get accidents and they die and they die why they open a portal for demons to have access to cause death premature death and people to die they also go into hospitals they make sacrifices in the hospitals and they speak dates and times which they sacrifice people that is why some people when you are taking them to the hospital go and anoint the bed take the anointing oil from our website and anoint the bed it's very important very 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 important uh the nyandoro one is calling uh hello hello prophet yes 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 i am live on facebook and periscope i was trying to reach you. i texted you before I, I wanted you to just share and empower people about with your testimony from 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 the age of five and um what happened to you when you were growing and and how you were involved in the satanic kingdom uh, and the bible and everything and how people are dying and uh things like that and uh premature death that were caused and and uh, what you saw the difference between us as christians now you are born again and the past life you had oh, oh, oh. people are hearing thank, you thank, right thank, now oh thank you thank thank you prophet uh, -huh. uh it 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 happened when i was uh, five years old and uh it didn't start with me it started with my grandfather mm -hmm. so uh in five years i was like uh, taken under the water i didn't know what was happening and i i saw like a world that was that existed that i didn't Last know time you when we were talking you said there is a sun and there's a moon in that world yes there yes rose. prophet and yes there was and and what i saw also was uh they 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 the 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 main maids i don't know if it's called the main maids uh -huh. they 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 have a fish tail but when they were inside as i was getting initiated they taught they 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 had legs and and i it's it's like i'm getting to see their similarities with the bible i'm not yet uh known with the new bible that i am i'm now reading that you taught me mm -hmm. but uh they, they were things that we were being taught in in as we were under the like mm -hmm. like the power of sacrifice because we we also as i started to grow i i saw that there were christians that were coming and 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 they wanted this power but one thing you that said also pastors were coming to you the pastors were coming to get this power but this thing that I taught them, uh, that I learned was a prayer did not, not bring results. It was sacrifice that brought results. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. because I don't know if it is in your Bible, but we were taught in, in the book that we were reading, uh, there was a king you know, who, who was losing a war. And as yes. he lost a war, he sacrificed his firstborn. And uh, there God turned against them because of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and what what I found with Christians that that I always loved when I was doing this thing, uh, Prophet Papa is, uh, they 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 liked to pray more, but they didn't want to to sacrifice. So so they do not have power. I, I would send a case, and the case would be would live on their life, even though they were praying, because would would tell people to give a big sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So. They, they are, they why are is it the sacrifice have to be big? Yeah, because prophet, what happens is, if if you have a a curse from from your father, your sacrifice has to meet with uh, with with the curse that that has to do with your family. Mm-hmm. So if your your forefathers sacrificed uh, five. Uh, cows you you cannot give one cow to meet with the five cows you have to give more or something that that connected to that so we 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 had people that were coming to us and they wanted to be rich and and some even came to the point whereby they even sacrificed their children prophet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. and and some of them uh they wanted to to be rich they even sacrificed that none of my children will get married mm. 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 so no matter how they they wanted to get married it's so, like they so meet there someone. is something i want to learn today if a mother comes and sacrifice their children and said they will not be married and you give them power to prosper for whatever they come to you for uh mm. what if the daughter comes to say i want to give birth what will happen it will not happen unless she she gives something that corresponds with with the sacrifice that that can meet with the sacrifice that the mother does so it has to be a big big offering that is similar a big outer she has to make a big outer that is similar to to the one that the mother gave so she can never be married she can meet a guy a handsome guy promise him to marry him and when the time comes the guy just disappears because they would have belonged to us because their mother gave them to us mm. so no matter what they do they will not go anywhere and sometimes what we used to do prophet i don't know what you are teaching but there are some things that we taught also there even to the point that we we would go in the streets and we would dress up like poor people mm. And when we dress up like poor people, we carry a, a, a plate with, with asking for money. And, and what they will do is, the moment you give the money, we, we are taking from you because we understood money was mm. a spirit. You are saying so, you so, go and become a beggar in the street. Mm, yeah, prophet. You dress like a beggar, but you, you already have your life at home. Yes, I am. You become a homeless and you start begging, but whoever put money in that plate, mm. you started draining their financial life and they open a door for you to have access into their lives. That's true, prophet. And to even to the extent that you would uh, you would give someone who act like a cripple, like they do not walk, and when you give them, people start to get sick because there was an exchange of the money because that was what we were taught and and that so people here so you are saying in the satanic world they've got they they plant people different places they can make other people to be like crippled people and beg in the street only to get access into people yes that's what you do because money is a spirit so so once you give it there is an exchange in the spirit so we knew that you cannot mm, just give anyone money that you, today. Mm, you cannot give just anyone money that you see so some but, will become crippled some will become homeless some will become beggars yes. what about this you taught me about 
you told me about uh, going midnight into the streets in the main roads and you would sacrifice for accidents and in the hospitals and stuff so if 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 you know people from Zimbabwe know there is a time like festive season that's when we, we would do it more because that's when the sacrifice would be done more so you'd go at night and you make sacrifices like big sacrifices if we are to kill even to the extent that people would kill people and mm -hmm. to the extent that sacrifice cows and people would die accidents there are roads that people would die all the time accidents would happen because it was a time whereby when you sacrifice and and blood was demanded and blood was required Marabasa. so would sacrifice and would do outers but what we learned was the outer was what would open a portal in the spirit so nothing would happen prophet if you do not give an out even though we worship uh, the devil himself we understood that uh, he's not the one who does it unless we open we give something then he can do it mm. so so, uh, so what, what about more, uh, what about the one you are teaching uh, saying you you steal children eyes and you steal their voices and you steal uh, their abilities when they're in their mother's wombs uh, so that they can be born, uh, what do you call this, a start down syndrome and some are born blind and all, all those things. Because what happens, Prophet, is when a child is, is in the born, we can actually see the potential of the child when they are in the mother's womb. So what we do is we are assigned to, to take their star. And we take their star, and when they grow up, they, they even though they potential, they cannot reach what they are supposed to do because we would have uh, taken, even if they are called by God, we would have taken their ability. So even if they pray, they, they still have a stamping block because uh, the, what we worship to tell us that this child is going to be a threat in the kingdom of God. And sometimes we would even kill many children because we didn't don't know who exactly was the one that wanted, but we would be willing to, to kill even many children. And I remember the time I came to your church, my assignment was to destroy your ministry because we were we, we hearing threats about your ministry. So I was sent to actually destroy and bring confusion in your ministry. Talking about destroying ministries, what will you do to destroy a ministry exactly? I know you said you, de okay. you, you destroyed a lot of churches before you came to our church. Uh, what would happen for pastors to lose the anointing, or you call it power, or for, for churches to close? How, how will it flow? <laughs> that one was simple, Prophet. That one, what we used to do is, we would send beautiful girls in their church. Hmm. And what we do is, this beautiful girls who come with problems to the pastor like they wanted to be helped and the more they get closer to the pastor and when the pastor sleeps with them he loses his power and when he loses this power and then people start to believe the church and the church does, doesn't grow again it's what like about the one on you were saying you put money in the offering basket and if the pastor is not powerful the finances of the church will be closed exactly prophet so what we do is uh we we come with the money that we 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 get from from our outer and it's like we are giving a donation it's like we are we are coming to partner with the pastor so because he's not prayerful enough you'll be happy that these people have come to partner with me and then when we give the money in the offering basket that ministry from that moment is not going to grow and everyone in the church no matter how much they 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 give they they won't get blessed because they we gave money to that ministry and the moment we gave money to that ministry uh, we the pastor automatically does not go any way all right lastly sorry to keep you long lastly so we, there we is this one 
of the ring we took from you that time when we were delivering you. And you said everyone in that satanic kingdom, when they graduated, they are given that ring. What does those rings do? Okay, the ring was a symbol of of authority and your position in the in the satanic world, your rank. So there were t- different rings. Mine was actually a more a higher rank because they would not have sent me if you were you were you were a big threat that's why they sent me they tried to send small boys but they could not so they said they're gonna send me you would see that my ring was more more bigger and and Mm -hmm. it had more things because it was a higher rank in the spiritual realm so what it does is it would give me command over small 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 demons Mm. It will give me command. Oh, you can command demon. demons once you have that ring. You can command demons once you have that ring. So they would actually see that ring in the spirit that this is a higher ring to us. Uh, how can people that are hearing get to know these rings if they see them physically? We know yours was spiritual until it manifested physically. But are they physical rings that are symbols that when people see a pastor? A prophet or anyone wearing a ring, then they can notice this is like a demonic ring. Are these uh, are others like ordinary rings that can be in the shop? Or what? How can people know about these rings? What we do, prophet, is it can be any ring, but and and it can it can have any symbol. There are many symbols on the ring. Some we have a snake. Some we have a lion. Some we have. Uh, a, a, a tiger. Some we have different types of of images on them. Mm-hmm. So it, depending on your level, you would carry that ring, and then it will symbolize authority. But mainly, uh, a, when the more you are higher, the more you are higher, your ring will not be seen physically. It will be spiritually. Mm. Oh, it's it, so it, those that are starting, they've got a physical ring. They have physical ring. So when you grow bigger, you will not even have a physical ring? It to be spiritual. Only a person of the spirit, higher spirit, can be able to spot it when you come. Because you are not like the small boys. You will be higher. So yours will not be seen with with mere people. It will be something that is big. Mm. Mm, So it will be spiritual. And if you are not spiritual, you can go to a church and people will say, this is just an ordinary person not knowing that this person is bigger in the spirit oh thank you thank you so much for your time i'll call you and pray with you one of the thank times. you prophet god bless you all right thank you uh this world is 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 um uh, is a world that is controlled by spirits in every success, in every failure, there's a spirit behind. It's either a spirit from God or a spirit from the devil. There is nothing that happens in this earth realm which is not controlled in the realms of the spirit. Now, they, they say in their kingdom, they caused the death before he came to Christ. When he came to our church, those that were in our church can type and confirm what I'm talking about. The atmosphere was so tense, you'd feel, you'd smell evil in the church. I could not break forth until my angel began to tell me, speak in this tongue, speak in this tongue, speak. When he was speaking, then he began to manifest. Lights went off. Lights came back. Lights went off three times, came back. And we took time to deliver him. But his testimony is, what we go through is this we go and we don't do honored prayer in the road we go and we sacrifice to open a spiritual portals for demons to cause accidents we go into the hospital someone will just come with a minor headache but there are beds that are already anointed in the hospitals that when people are on that bed they are already ready to go because they've been placed in a place of death they unlock gates of death for people that is why sometimes when you buy clothes 
I forgot to ask him about clothes. You must anoint it with anointing oil and pray over it because they sacrifice clothes. They sacrifice food. That's why before you eat, you must pray. Food, there are restaurants that he knows by name. I cannot speak. I cannot allow him to do that. But there are restaurants that he knows by name that, they, that are already from the satanic kingdom. Restaurants that he knew under the sea before he saw them in this earth realm. So the devil is cunning and is operating in this earth realm. And what the devil does is he puts an altar and he controls people's lives by the power of the altar. Uh, I'm not sure if she's the one that I was calling. Hello? Ah, uh, right. I am live uh, Facebook, never TV live. Dandrugumbo teacher, Nyaya, ye the world under the sea. Njuzuma, memes, and stuff. So I wanted you to give your testimony. Yes, I can wait. All right, I'm going to put you on loudspeaker. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Uh, you don't have teeth with you? All right, you speak and your daughter will speak in English. All right, all right. She, she is going to be speaking in a language, and uh, because she's from Zimbabwe, so her English is not that perfect. But the daughter is going to be interpreting for you to understand. Hello, Papa. Yes, how are you today? I'm fine, Papa. How are you? God bless you long time. I will pray for you both with Mama later. But I'm live on Facebook, so and I don't Mama, I it's a testimony. Yeah, yeah, the past life that she had before she came to church by. Okay. All right. So, uh, tell you to story to tell your story from. What happened when she was 15 years old, how she was taken, how she came back, how she started uh, moving and being that type of a person. Okay, Papa, so should we type it? No, you don't go to that, so everyone is hearing you right now. Oh, okay. This is a lady who was taken at the age of 15. I made it physically. Yeah. Everyone knows Correct. this one in Zimbabwe. Correct. She lived under the sea for three years. She never came out under the water. She came back after three years and yes, story begins. Okay, she Hello Baba. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, when she was nine years old, nine she years was old. sent nine years old. Mm -hmm. She was sent on an errand by a mother. Mm -hmm. And she she really doesn't know what happened, mm -hmm. but what she knows is she stayed underwater for three years. So in those three years, ask her, was it like she was dreaming or she was just having that life in there, like she knew where she was? As my daughter, I reckon that my is your mom. She said she was good as someone was dead, was just moved from one place to another. She really didn't know what was happening to her. Can you think that she learned under the sea? Sometimes did you learn something? Did you learn something? Did you learn something? And then, she said she learned to to live alone in mm -hmm. an isolated place, mm -hmm. and she also learned to live with people who always quarrel. Right. So how? <laughs> and then after after the first stage of living with people that quarrelled every day, she went to another stage. Mm -hmm. It it was a very peaceful place, a very peaceful place, but she couldn't eat anything from that side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they informed her that she was now free to go. Uh, but uh, 
when was she taught how to prophesy or how to see things in the spirit or the things that she was giving people out of the sea was she taught under the sea how to give people or something like that yes she learned all of that under the water all right how did she come out from the water and how did she connect with her family like in a dream or physical no it was like someone was obsessed with one spirit which informed everyone the day she was coming out of the water mm -hmm. and what was supposed to be done for her to come out alive. And they followed the instructions? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. And when she came out, how did she study the healing people and prophesying people? Magabuda Maratanga Sikwatsravan in Kuporofita. She started becoming a dreamer by dreaming what was about what was bound to happen. Everything that came to a dream came to pass. That's how she started to do everything. So she would know exactly what will happen the whole day tomorrow. And Yes. She did. Hmm. So if a person is a Christian, if he, the person comes to you by those days, uh, was your power going to work on a Christian? Yes, she could. She could help anyone. Hmm. Uh, oh. We were. Um, what about when I delivered? Uh, after the deliverance, did she face any threats, any attacks, anything from the kingdom of the devil? And my mother delivered my papa. My grandma face any challenges, any threats, or anything from the devil. Mm -hmm. No, she didn't. My so she became 100 percent free yes she became 100 percent free oh, she's right. now a free person god bless i see this is a different number so when i'm done i'll call you on this number or the other number on this number all right anything else you want to say before we close and spanish from daughter it's set over Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said she wants to thank you for everything. She wants to thank Kingdom Embassy for changing her life. She has a lot of t testimonies to share with you, and she wants to. She wants you to keep on praying for her and your family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Papa. All right, I will call after the live. God bless you. Amen. Amen. These people, if you meet them, you will understand that these things that we do as Christians is not a joke. These things that we do is not a joke. You cannot just get in church and say something is happening in the spirit. 
there are things that will be hundred percent happening spiritually. When a car accident takes place, there is something happening in the spiritual realm. When someone is sick, there is something that happens in the realms of the spirit. When someone is dead, something is happening in the realms of the spirit. There is no way your husband can just divorce you. There is no way. I wish I had a number of an, another one. The other one, that one, she's my relative and she's not born again. That's why I can't even call her. But she still believes that devil is more powerful than Jesus. She says she takes, uh, if, uh, if any, any, any woman wants to take someone's husband, let's say she's dating a married man. When she is dating a married man, what they will do is, at that specific time, she will say, bring this amount of money, then bring a picture of the person, then she will light fire at 12 midnight, then she will make you uh, uh, kneel down and do poop there. Then you take your own poop with your own hand. And then you throw it in the fire and then you name the name of the woman of the wife of the man you want to take out from the husband and you say words like your husband shall smell you like poop your husband shall run away from someone who is poop and a b c d i don't know whatever words they say and whatever and she guarantees people within seven days the man is going to leave his wife and it's going to come. Now, you start having quarrels in the house. You start having problems in the house. And you think it's just normal. Your husband is not okay. Or you think because he's dating another girl, that's why things are happening like this. There is a demon that has been given access to your world, to your life. And let me tell you this. This is very important. Prayer does not change. Prayer does not change a case or a blessing. It is an altar that controls cases and blessings. That is why for Balaam to release a case, he needed an, a sacrifice first from Balak. That is why you see when people left the Garden of Eden and started living a cursed life instead of a blessed life, Abel and Cain made sacrifices. I'm going to talk about Abel and Cain soon. So every time when God is about to do, God bless you, Julie, whenever God is about to do something, God introduces you to an altar. Because it is on the altar, which is a place to open your own spiritual portal between God and you. A portal now becomes a place or a, 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 an open gate to access the spiritual realm. That is why when Abraham made an altar, the angel came down. Do not kill your son, your only son. And then Jacob came after years and years on the same altar and he saw angels coming. It becomes a place where a door has been opened for angels to come. If it is in the demonic world, for demons to come. So when an altar was opened in your family by your Abraham and you are a Jacob now, and it was a demonic altar, those demons are still having access into your family bloodline. That's why you can be a Christian and not be married for 50 years, for 40 years, for 30 years. You can be a Christian and have a spiritual husband. You can be a Christian and have some demonic attacks. You can, have a, 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 you can be a Christian and everything that you touch is destroyed. Why? There is an outer you need to destroy, but the outers are destroyed by outers. Number two. Number one, outer is a place which you build. Number two, outer is a person. Rabashanda Basati. Outer, it's a person. Someone is asking, how much is the seed to kill those openings? No, there is no much. I'm going to teach you that. But it takes an outer to break an out. God says where we read to Gideon, Gideon, here's the thing. 
How many years of Egypt has Israel suffered with this problem in this case? And he said seven years. He said, go and take a cattle, a fat one, which has seven years, and put it on the altar. Gideon is wondering. We were praying for seven years. Things never changed. I only put a cattle here. When I sacrifice on the altar, God have answered and things have changed. Why? That altar for seven years needed a cattle for seven years, with seven years age, to break the altar from the enemy's camp. Bless you, blessed for your offering. You need to understand it takes an altar to break the altar. Satanists are not praying. You heard those ones in India. Every day, 10.30, they are collecting people's hair. Uh, I heard of some, some, someone in, um, in, in UK, Liverpool, UK. The lady looks for, for, for used condoms in the bins everywhere. And she takes spams from human beings. And she says those spams, they help her to destroy people's lives, to control things. Those spams are the ones that she uses to ayaba santi by. You must be very careful because any point of contact from you can be used against you. That is why you can't even share clothes with anyone you don't know. Because your clothes can become, I was prophesying with my sons in, uh, in, in, uh, in um, Cabra Satabaha, in Georgetown, South Africa. I don't know how many people are watching live. And we were in South Africa with my sons in um, David Ngaka's church. And when we were in that branch, I located a lady I think she wasn't giving birth or she wasn't married or something like that. And I said, the problem behind your problem, because you want to deal with your problem, but what changes your problem is not your problem. It is the problem behind your problem. So you focus on the problem, that's what the devil wants you to do. But it is the focus that is in the problem behind your problem that changes your problem. And I told you, the problem behind your problem is this. The problem behind your problem is that in this year, on this specific date, you had a washing and you placed your clothes on the wire. When you went to look for your clothes, your inner garment was missing. I described it. I think it was red or something like that. Those who are watching live, they understand. And they took it and they went, they sacrificed. And she said, I've been running away. They want to kill me. And these things are happening. Why? They only needed a point of contact. That, that, uh, that uh, inner garment is not affecting and controlling your spiritual life. In India, my son said that they use hair. They collect human hair. In the UK, I heard of someone that collects... Uh, yes, Gary King was prophesying with me. He's here confirming. They, 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 they take spams and they use it. They destroy people's lives. Kali daya basante. I want you to know that Jesus in you is the hope of all glory. He is the King of kings and the most powerful God. But why do we pray? Prayer is only for fellowship with God. Prayer is for fellowship with God. Communication with God. It's a two-way communication. Number two, why do we worship? It is in worship that we bring down the presence of God. But prayer, fasting, bless you, Anna Katema, for your offering, I'm yet to call you. Uh, prayer and fasting is a lesser realm which the devil wants to keep you. It is actually in the power of outer, Mbandele Bedia Koto. It is in the power of outer that things are destroyed. Mm -hmm. Things are destroyed in outers. That is why you see that in the book of Revelation, you see that even in heaven, there is a, in front of the throne of God, there is an outer. I went to heaven one, one day, years ago, and I saw the 24 elders on the throne of God. They were standing like in a cave. And when I saw them, the first one was Abraham, the last one was what we call, the one we call Doubting Thomas. Thomas was the one at the end. And Abraham took the ensigns and placed them on top of the altar. When they bent, they came out like different colorful smoke. 
and entered in the nostrils of God and God stood and there was a move. The glory of God covered the whole earth heaven angels would start falling down that's when i understood why angels need wings angels they need wings why because wings when they are falling down from the glory of god when god stands up every angel falls down so when they are falling down they balance with the wings that is why you see angels that are called seraphims they are responsible for worship they are close to god angels with four wings they are beneath the ones with six wings and the others with two wings. And the angels on earth, they don't have wings. That is why when they saw those men in, in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, they followed them wanting to have sex with angels because they thought they were human beings. Angels on earth, they don't need wings because wings are there to balance when they are falling from the presence of God. Those with six wings, they need a lot. So they can balance those with four. They need a lot because now... The outer is powerful to an extent that you can find an outer in heaven. Here on earth, <laughs> let me shock you. Revelations, Revelations chapter number 8. Revelations 8. Revelations chapter 8. I know the devil is mad by this truth that I'm sharing with you right now. Revelation chapter 8, And when he had opened the seventh seal, where, where, where was silent in heaven about the space of half of an hour? When the seal was open, they were silent for half an hour. And I saw seven angels, the seven angel, which stood before God, and to them that were seven trumpets, that were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Right? The angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given much increase, and he should offer it with prayers. Of all saints, which the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. Bless you, Clifford, for your offering. For the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Right? The Bible is saying the angel took the offerings and the prayers that were on the altar and it went up before God. Hmm. That is why you see in the Old Testament, the priest would take a God and put names of people and press it so that when it goes, something can happen. So you have to really understand that when God is moving, there are principles that we cannot remove because of prayer. There are principles we cannot remove because of prayer. Many people, you say, because I prayed. No, 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 no. They are what we call empty prayers, and the devil is smiling when people pray with empty prayers. Let me go give you last scriptures before we pray. Mbaleto, ndilavatete, ndabakutoto ko bande li kaprodaze. Rindolonde le mesi dabaye. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's um, Acts chapter number 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles and the fellowship and breaking of bread. These are three dimensions. First dimension is a fellowship. What is fellowship? Is giving. Second level is called what? Breaking of bread. What is breaking of bread? Is a revelation. Then thirdly is prayers. What is prayer? It's a spiritual warfare. So prayer deals with wars in the realms of the spirit. So a prayer without a sacrifice does not bring a victory. That is why Nandoro here was talking about the king in the Bible 
who was fighting the Israelites and God spoke to the Israelites, you are going to win. I'm going with you. You will win the battle. When they were busy winning the battle, the enemy saw that God was winning with them. Then he ran home and he built an altar. When he sacrificed, the Bible says when God saw that he sacrificed, he left the Israelites, he left his prophecy that he promised, and he went and he helped the king of the, the enemy king, and the enemy won the battle. And the Israelites were like, how can God tell us we are going to win and we lost the battle? It's because they were no longer fighting the human beings, they were now fighting an altar. And an altar can only be fought with an altar. That is why when people of Israel were coming out from Egypt, God ordered them to come out with the gold and the silver, which is money. They collected from the Egyptians gold and silver, and when they took all these things, why were they taking gold and silver when there is no shop to buy in, in the wilderness? There is no shop to buy in the in the in the red sea why would they take gold and, and silver when they are going to their own promised land it's because god knew that when the time comes they need animals so they should come out for with animals for sacrifice then god needed money to build his own church for a temple to be built they have to be money now god will give someone money why because we have a problem when he looks at your problem, for you to change your problem, he knows you need to build an altar. Now, how do we build an altar? How can we fight an altar? You can fight an altar by an altar. How do we build it? An altar, number one, I told you it's a place. Number two, it is a person. They have to be a place in your house that you build an altar. How do you build? Do you build like Old Testament? No. It could be a locker, it could be a sofa, it could be a drawer, anywhere where you know this is where I put my seeds and I pray to God. You may not put it as money, but you can put the receipts. Let's say you go to prophetpassion.com and you give your sacrifice. Well, not your offering. There is a free will offering which you just give something. Then there is tight where you give 10%. But out of you big, according, you give big according to the giant you are, you are, you are facing, right? And when you do that, you then find number two. An altar is a person. Who is this person? Abraham met Melchizedek. Melchizedek is an altar. And he gave unto Melchizedek and a kiss from his father was broken. And a generational blessing was given to him. And he became the father of all nations. Why? Because he introduced his sacrifice to an altar. Number two. Everyone that he had a problem would go to the high priest. Why? Why are they going to the high priest? Because they need to give their sacrifice to the high priest. Let me tell you this again. Prayer does not change your problem. Gideon had problems for seven years. His father's case was in his life since he was born. There are three altars God told him to build. Build an altar. Israel was in suffering for seven years. Take a kettle with seven years and put it in that altar. Number two, your father's house. Go to your father's house and take a, a bull, a kettle. And he took his and said, no, 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 no. It's too slim. No, no, no. Go and take the fat one. You don't just give anything. You give a fat one. Huh. Now, talking about a fat one, I'll call one of my sons. He's our pastor in Dallas, in the Dallas branch we're about to, to do, to, to, to start. He sacrificed a nice, beautiful vehicle to my brother in my brother's ministry. We all uh, sit under my brother. And, uh, and uh, he gave a car. But his heart kept on bleeding. He kept on crying to God. He gave this car. He gave but from his heart he did not release it that's what many people do you give but you don't release from the heart every time you see the car you think ah maybe the man of god shall bless me back all this until the car was bent when the car was bent that's when he became, he had freedom in his heart there are people like cain and abel he is not picking there are people like cain and abel cain 
and Abel, they all gave on the out. But when he came again, he did not release from the heart. He gave, but from me, a uh, man of God, how are you doing? I'm well, Prophet, how are you? I am doing good. We're excited about Dallas. I'm live on Facebook and Facebook. Yes, I'm live on Facebook and press copy on the loudspeaker. Okay. I wanted you to say your testimony, how you were bleeding in your heart when you gave your car to Apostle Java and um, and how sometimes you would regret and mama and and you know the pain that you went through. I wanted you to, to say it to people. <coughs> yes, everyone is hearing you right now. Um, maybe to own that issue this is what happened um, uh, well, well, there's a time in my life when I got to a point where things were very tough for me um, I was doing well in terms of my finances and my career and uh, then things started going downhill so at that, at that point in time uh, I learned about giving uh, sacrificial giving and um, I was losing everything one by one, one by one. And the only thing of value that I was left with was that car. And, oh, you are um, saying I, God wanted you to sacrifice. But yeah, your yeah, biggest yeah, sacrifice yeah, was your car. Yeah, the but only you thing were was, giving uh, everything uh, else that was not your car. Uh, uh, it, what was happening is I was giving else, everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of no, not necessarily that I was uh, giving everything else in that manner it's like I had my my you know as a person you've got what you say uh, this makes me uh, comfortable like I'm saying uh, when I have got this I feel at peace because mm -hmm. you know sometimes we feel peace with the material things that we have acquired mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. so I think that were making me feel at peace mm -hmm. in my life Mm -hmm. So when I started losing those things somehow, not giving to God, no, just losing them as life was going down the drain, mm -hmm. uh, then there was a lesson of giving that came by. So the only thing that I, I had, which was left at that point in time, was that car. Mm. And that car, I bought it new and I bought it, uh, I loved that car. It was my possession, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So one day I was sleeping, mm -hmm. and uh, the Holy Spirit had ministered to me through a dream that mm -hmm. I must give that car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I woke up, I rebuked that dream because I thought it was the devil speaking to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at that point in time, what I did is uh, uh, I just waited because you know when you are when you are married, you need to get approval from your wife many things mm -hmm. so i said god if it's you who is speaking uh, my wife will have to have to confirm about this mm -hmm. that is one thing about giving you know uh, god confirms it god mm -hmm. confirms every seed or every sacrifice that you are going to be giving mm -hmm. whether it's money whether it's whatever you want to give there's a confirmation that comes to your heart it's just like right now as i'm speaking maybe someone will be ministered to that you must sacrifice something and mm -hmm. uh it you confirms it. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened. So the other day we went to church to a service, and that issue was was spoken about. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the service, I said, "I am going to take my book and everything of that kind and give it." Mm -hmm. So when I went home, when I went home, I was sitting. I, I went. I, I was. I was talking to my wife. I said, "God said something to me today," mm -hmm. and he said, "She said, what did he, he say?" And, and I said, there's something that we need to give in this house that is big. Mm -hmm. It's very big that we are going to bleed. Mm. And she said, and she said, oh, you mean your car? Jesus. Just like that. Easy like that. Jesus. She said, you mean your car? Mm. I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> that is my car. I love that car. It was the only position that I had at that time, which was, uh, I was thinking that if I sell my car, I can restart my life and do other businesses and things like that. Mm -hmm. So now here I, I am. I'm now uh, losing the only thing that was holding me to 
to to believing that I can resurrect in my finances. Mm. You see, so when my wife said it, that is the only voice that I wanted to hear at that point in time. Then I said, you know, this is a straight confirmation because she didn't know that I was thinking of doing that. Mm. She didn't know about it. But now I just took the uh, the books, the registration books, everything. I packed everything. I told my friend, come and drive me to Apostle's house. We, we took the car. We went. We take it. We took it there. Mm. But I want to tell you something. It wasn't easy. Mm. It wasn't easy. Every step of me driving the car, leaving it to uh, the men's go- uh, men of God's house, it was tough. It was the toughest moment of my life mm. because here I am. I'm now sacrificing the only thing that was giving me hope uh, in terms of trying to to recoup mm-hmm. from my financial distress. Mm-hmm. So this is what happened. Then when I finally gave that car, mm. um, apparently apparently they wanted to use the money to buy um, uh, equipment for the for the church. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so as they were doing that. Uh, the man of God was driving it. I think he also advertising to anyone who would want to buy it so that we can buy equipment for the church. Mm-hmm. You see, every time that that car would drive and park at the parking lot at, mm. at, the, at the church, mm. my heart would bleed. <laughs> <laughs> my heart would bleed. It was painful. The moment that I could see that car, I could feel the pain in me. I, did I do the right thing? Hmm. What, what is happening? You know that hmm. kind of a thing. I had that attachment with that thing, but I want to tell you something, uh, Prophet. Hmm. That is what broke me. That is what broke me. You know, from then onwards, like uh, then this is what happened now. Uh, to see that this sacrifice was coming from deep down my heart, the devil was also paying to the extent that he made that car to go in flames. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, when the man of God was driving it, going somewhere to to minister, it, that that it nearly killed. Him. That means because you 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 should have been the one that was driving, and you should have maybe died. Exactly. You see now what I'm saying. Hmm. You see, because that car was was going to burn either way. So now it 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 burned in the hands of God. So the, the thing is, no matter how much we want to protect our 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 our, our physical possessions, mm-hmm. at some point in time we will lose them. True. We will lose them. We will lose. We might, you might acquire everything. You might have millions and millions of dollars. Mm. But if you don't lose them in on earth, you will lose them when you die. Mm. Because when you die, you will not go with all of those things. Recabo. So you see, what happens is when we are willing to separate ourselves from the physical. And investing in the spiritual, then that is a point of no return because the devil cannot do anything with you at that point in time because mm-hmm. you cannot be moved by anything physical. Mm-hmm. You cannot be moved by anything material. So the reason why a lot of people cannot give or cannot sacrifice is because they they are they feel comfort in the physical. Mm-hmm. They feel comfort, but now if you are comfortable in the physical, there is no way. You can experience the the spiritual breakthrough because mm. you are holding on to the physical, which is nothing else compared to the f- spiritual. Mm. So, as far as, as the physical is concerned, you want to hold on to your money. You want to hold on to this thing. You want to hold on to that thing. You want to hold on to that thing. This is where the devil will be sitting. Remember Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus Christ made the two sacrifices that people don't mention about. Mm-hmm. The sacri- the first sacrifice that Jesus Christ did is. When he finished fasting, mm. the devil gave him the world. That is the physical. He mm. said, "If you bow to me, I'll give you everything that you want." That is ev- that is the physical things that we see with our eyes. Mm. You see, but now this is what happened. Jesus Christ refused. That was the first sacrifice that he did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He refused to be enticed by anything physical. Mm. So, if you want to see that you have overcome the physical. You have no emotional attachment to anything uh, of, 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 of physical. Mm. If you have got emotional attachment to physical things, you, that will always be your point of temptation. The devil always tempt you using the physical thing. Mm. But if you are willing to let go, this is why giving becomes a vital situation. You know, mm. When you are willing to let go of anything that you have, mm. you always have it. 
Jesus Christ was willing to go of the physical world, but he he, he got it through the, the spiritual. He That's got his powerful. victory in the spiritual realm, and he automatically rules the world too. Because right now, if you mention the name of Jesus, the devil flees. You see? Mm. So the, the first victory that I had, uh, Prophet, is winning that physical battle where I had to let go of this thing that was valuable to me. And oh, okay. I, like, like we were saying, it was painful. It was painful. It was very painful. It was not easy because that was the point of separation. You know, when something is being given birth, you know, when a mother is giving birth, it's tough for them. Mm -hmm. It's tough for them. But they are bringing out life. Powerful. So sometimes oh. when you are when you are when you are when you are breaking yourself off at that point in time, it's 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 like you are dividing a human to separate the two, the physical and the spiritual. It's tough. Mm. I because think, you are uh, saying I'm not attached to this. I'm not my, my I'm not gonna let us get attached to this. I'm not gonna let myself attach to this. So it's a point of separation where the body separates with the with the spiritual. With the spirit side, you see. So when you um, do that now, then you begin to post your spiritual victories. You know. That's a powerful testimony. I don't know, prophet. I'm gonna need you to. This is my testimony. I'm gonna need you to tell people where to find us in Dallas from the week first of November. Before I I continue with the teaching, those that are in Dallas, this shall be our pastor in Dallas. And uh, what will be the address? Uh, let me just check it out here. Okay, so we are going to be located at Fairview Town Center. At Fairview Town Center of 75 and Stacy Road. Just five miles from downtown McKinney. Try so to, what we do is... Uh, try to what type it on our, on our Facebook if you are live with me. So uh, people can now try to, to keep advertising it. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll just send it through to you so that they can they can be able to put it there. All right. God bless you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Professor. I think I'm going to 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 be calling one of my sons to give his also testimony. But I want you to understand this most important thing. How are real? Spiritual world is real. The kingdom of the devil is real. The kingdom of heaven is real. This earth realm is real. All these kingdoms are real. Do not allow the devil to mess around with your mind. Do not allow the devil to mess around with your mind. The devil will want you to be stuck in one position. That is why Christians, they have power. To those who received Jesus, he gave them power. So Christians, are pa they have power, but they are not powerful. Because what makes you powerful is the energy that you get from the outers. Check every man of power in the Bible. They were coming from an outer. You need to revive that gospel and see the next move of God. I'm going to call Gary King here. You know him. I was with him in, um, in South Africa and we were prophesying and things were happening. God is using him and the blessing of God is upon his life. And I pray that the grace of the Lord be upon him. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm on, uh, I saw you were watching some live on, 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 on Facebook. I want you to yes, give your testimony. What happened when you started moving in the outer, moving with the Gafa and things like that? What is your your testimony before I begin to pray for people? Because there are people already giving you on our website that you are already introduced to outers. I want you to just tell us your testimony. And, and in short, we don't have much time. Okay, Papa. Thank you, Papa, for this opportunity. Uh, mine is a life-changing testimony. Hmm. Uh, this was a, say, five years ago when we just got married with my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
there were actually people who had spoken that who never have a child mm -hmm. and uh, they had done also their own things in the demonic world given sacrifices to make sure that we will not be able to have a child mm -hmm. so we prayed i'm a pastor i know all men of prayer standing crying fasting we prayed all men of prayer but still uh, we, 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 remember we, my wife couldn't get pregnant until one time uh, God spoke to us with a vehicle that she had driven twice. I had only driven it once. Then we came sitting on the altar. We, we, we sacrificed because what I had learned, Papa, was that uh, there are things that prayer responds to and things that prayer will not respond to. Mm -hmm. And uh, most most people now are, are hemmed in because they've paid, but there's no change. Mm. It's because it's like the story. It is like the story in Second Kings chapter number three that you, that the other men was talking about courting, where Israel has got a prophecy that they are going to win in all, and the king Nash is left with seven hundred men, mm. and he takes his son and sacrifices his son, and immediately the prophetic word fails. Because they went to fight a man with an altar, while they were having a prophecy with no altar. Mm. So a lot of people are playing with prophecies because there is nothing accompanying their prophecies. It's just a prophecy and they don't do anything to connect to the prophecy because the enemy will definitely fight the prophecy. Mm -hmm. The day that the father said, Jesus, you are my son in whom I'm more pleased, was the, day the devil attacked him and said, if you are the son of God, Turn these stones into bread. Mm -hmm. So we 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 took our vehicle, Papa. I st I still remember it like it happened yesterday. And we 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 put it on the altar. Two weeks later, my wife was pregnant. Mm. She was pregnant two weeks later. And when we went back to church in I was in Jerez at that time. Mm. The Sunday after that, we had diamonds appearing in church, and it was all over the newspapers. Mm -hmm. After that kind of a sacrifice, I think God wanted to make us realize that. It acknowledged our seed, and uh, it happened like that. Amen. What do you say to yes. the so right right now before I come to pray for them? Sorry, Papa. What will you say to the people that are watching now before we begin to pray for them? They should try. If they've tried prayer, it has failed. They should try the altar. They should try the altar. That one will not fail. It works for Christians. It works for non-Christians. They should try the, try that principle. That principle is something that God cannot ignore. Mm. Because God is a giver. Mm. When people begin to operate in the realm of God, they will see the God kind of results. Mm. There are things that God can... The Bible says God cannot do without a cheerful giver. He cannot do. So people need to tap into that realm and they will begin to as another level in God. Like now people are watching, let it, let it not be just uh, testimonies coming, but let someone be motivated to give. Let somebody be motivated and let their faith be stirred to do something right now. And I assure them that they will have a testimony. It won't take time. It, 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 it doesn't take time. It only takes God. And this time is only going to take their seed. This seed is what is going to connect them to the future they're desiring, to the miracle they're desiring. And, and 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 it is gonna work for them papa i want to encourage everyone listening right now i want to encourage everybody listening right now do something see do what you have never done attach your faith attach your heart to it mm -hmm. attach your heart to it and say lord i'm believing that this thing is gonna turn the devil's grip cannot be kept on my my oh, on my own business on my on my on my finances on my on my you see i, I always love to say papa uh the devil will never win against God because the devil does not have a son to give. God had a battle with the devil. God had a battle with the devil. And what God did was to give his only son. His solution to human problems was to give his son. And Jesus is his altar. Jesus is not the altar for Christians. He is God's personal altar. God had to bring changes by introducing Jesus. I just said yes, a revelation. The devil wanted to fight with God. Yes. And God cannot fight his own creation. So what God yes, did was to give. And what he gave yes, is what fought the devil and what overcame the devil. That's, that's 
sword overcame the Meaning devil. Meaning your seed is the one that fights your battle. You don't have to fight. You don't have to fight. The, speed do, the seed will speak on your behalf. Mm. Where your voice cannot be heard, it will mm. speak. Where naturally you cannot, you don't have access. You are applying for it. Have access. You are, you are. You want to be healed. You are suffering from HIV. There are things that can, can, can money. Can, there are things that seeds can do for you that prayer cannot do for you. And this is a practical side, Papa. I, I'm happy because you have just thought about altars, and we have seen the practical. Side. Even for me, in the prophetic, I always love to tell people. Like now, my message to each time I meet a, a minister of the gospel, I'll tell them the power of submission and the power of having a father and the power of a sacrifice. Mm. Like my prophetic level has gone up mm. by sacrifice. It's not because I pray so much. It's not because I'm the most perfect. I've got so many errors, Papa, you know. Ah, you <laughs> but because of, my seeds, <laughs> because of my seeds, because of my seeds and because of my sacrifices, mm. I have been connected to a source of grace. And mm. this grace has just been has just been poured and the testimonies are everywhere. And I want to encourage everybody listening right now, do mm. something. Don't just listen. Do something. Right now, go to Passion Java. Do something. Mm. Do something you have never done. And say, Lord, I want to try this thing. I want to try it. And I'm telling you, it won't take time. You will have a testimony. You have a testimony. Go to Passion Java right now. Go to Passion Java right now. I'm telling you, before even this weekend comes to an end, somebody will be calling to think of the goodness of the Lord and what God has done in your life. And it's your time and it's your turn. And it's your time and it's your turn. And God, God has brought this message specifically for you. Don't say I've heard this before. Don't say I have. Is there any amount Baba. for an outer? When it comes to an outer, Papa, is something you have never done. Mm. Something you have never done. Something you have never done. The best. Mm. The best you have never done. Mm. You see? The best. You need to you need you need to take push your faith to the next level. Mm. If whatever you give, if it does not move you, it won't move God. It has to move you. Powerful. If it does not touch you, it will not touch God. Mm. God. And most people will tell you you are crazy. Yes, Papa. God bless you so much for your testimony. It is encouraging someone here. It is Thank you, Papa. Someone. May God bless our reach you after life. I am going to call one last person. This one is in UK. You all know this is our pastor in UK. And... Um, and uh, he had issues in giving birth, and it was bad. And God spoke to him, son. Yes, sir. I uh, am uh, live on Facebook and Periscope right now. I don't know if you're watching. And um, I am watching, and I am very excited about the message that you're preaching about altars. Praise the Lord. So I want uh, to also share your testimony. You have a revelation. You you taught me without knowing that you are teaching me. There's a revelation you did for 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 the pregnancy, and you saw the uh, your sacrificial seed and everything. I want you to give a testimony of what you did and what God did for you to encourage someone who's watching right now. Papa, when it comes to altars and uh, well. Uh, <coughs> What can I say? This year we had a, a misfortune when it comes to <coughs> pregnancy, and uh, we, we we lost we lost a baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, while we were waiting on the Lord, while I was waiting on the Lord, I just got this revelation to give a seed. Actually, uh, when we lost uh, a child, it was because we had not sacrificed. Mm. Upon an altar, there is a man of God who was meant to give us instruction, and he failed to do it. Mm. And so now we suffered. Mm. And what you are doing is is just something that is very, very important because people need to hear this. Amen. People need to be instructed. You've just asked a question to get um, to get a king. That, ha, what should one give? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Papa, I think I have an answer. I was, I was, I was, I was wishing that you had called me to ask me that question. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, the phone rang. Uh -huh. 
And now that the phone has rung, what I can say is that when it comes to giving a sacrificial offering, basically it has to pain you and it almost leaves you with nothing. Hmm. Abraham was left with nothing when he sacrificed his son, Isaac. If he does not if he does not leave you empty, you see the thing about sacrificing is that is where our heart is. Mm. And many people they have their hearts on things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So by giving those things and they are left empty, then then they can only look up to God. Amen. And that is a sacrifice that is an aroma that goes straight to heaven. Yeah. So when it came to my wife, <laughs> I just said, I'm going to sow a seed. Hmm. My birthday is on the 28th. Yeah. My wife is on 22nd. So I combined that and I gave a seed, a sacrificial offering towards mm. the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember how many givings that I've been giving, Papa, because... <laughs> I know, but there's a specific one. I think you gave 900 pounds. Oh, yes. Oh. 900 for... Yes. 900, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My wife is even here. She's saying that we need to share the testimony about the miracle job. Yeah. She was promoted. I, I just have a, a line of testimonies, Papa. I don't even know. <laughs> and, and I know because of time, I won't be able to share everything. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the 900 pounds, this was a revelation that God gave me to give a seed for each and every month. 100 pounds for every month. Mm. And you know, a wife women carry a child for nine months Mm. so it was for every month Mm. and i gave that (laughs) offering you see sometimes i just sit and listen to you (laughs) and then god just drops a revelation on what to do and gives me an instruction but this issue about altars they are life-changing life-changing they are life changing. You see, many people are toiling, Papa. Mm-hmm. And before God can restore us to mm-hmm. the position of Adam and Eve, yeah. I remember there's a time I gave a, a, a sacrificial offering mm-hmm. and I was left with nothing. Yeah. I was illegal in this country mm-hmm. and I had to do it. I had to raise that second bull that you were talking about. Yeah. And when I did so, Papa, (laughs) since then, I stopped toiling. Yeah. Completely. So there are men and women who are listening and they are stuck. Hmm. They just don't know how to to go ahead. God will speak to them. Yeah. And like you say that they have to connect with a man of God. Papa, even I haven't even shared when you prayed for me about eating in the dream, now that you're talking about sacrifices and altars. Since that time you prayed for me, Papa, all the evil manipulation that has been happening to me in the dream, every time we're at a point of success, every time we're at a point of when, breakthrough. When he would come to a place where he's about to have a major breakthrough, exactly. a dream. And I would dream, have a dream. Someone would I would quarrel with my wife. And give him. We start by fighting each other. And yes. Then everything is destroyed. Yes. Everything what is happened? destroyed. And then we go back to zero. Hmm. But when I knelt in the hotel room when you are here in London, mm. <laughs> I don't know what hit me. First of all, I fell on the on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> but since then, Papa, the evil manipulation that was happening. It stopped. I remember I came with a seed and you said to me, but you have already sown. Yes. I said, ah, Papa, I know where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Even you are not going to stop me from giving my sacrifice. <laughs> True. <laughs> so I just had to listen to what God is saying to me. Mm-hmm. Because this issue of eating, it is affecting many people as well out there. Hmm. Thank you for your yes. testimony. I'm going to pray for people. Amen, Papa. It's an honor. May you be there. It's an honor and a privilege. As well. Bless you. Amen. 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 Uh, someone was talking to one of my sons and says, Ah, we love the old prophet person that would preach the gospel and help churches to get money. 
and you would say i don't need any money from church and i cannot be paid by anyone god blesses me that person was a good person uh, that one we loved him but uh, this new person in america is different because he is now asking for donations and donations and donations and my son spoke something important he said come on prophet person have been in america for less than one year he have now built a church a big branch in new york city he is now starting Dallas Church. He is now buying a building for worth millions of dollars. He has been running a church since beginning of this year, 2018. And now he has over 400 members in one branch and other 300 members in another branch. And churches have been happening in America. They don't even have building. Some are still renting up to now. They don't even have membership like that this man you don't know him if you go close to him you work 24 hours a day he sleeps two hours three hours working and working and some people have a problem when he says give an offering or when he says give a donation the gospel is cheap in africa because you may not need even instruments to preach the gospel but when it comes to america there's a time we want to go on TV station, we want to be on Go TV, we want to be on the Word Network, we want to be on TBN, it takes money. We want instruments for the new building, it takes money. We want to clean, tomorrow, uh, Monday we are going to clean our new building, we need things to clean with. And people, they say, ah, how can he ask for donations? For these things to be there, that's this set to be here, these cameras to be here. For all these people, we have 1,000 people watching us, over 1,000 people watching us on Facebook and, and Periscope and millions of people watching on KTV. For these things to happen, somebody bought this camera. Somebody bought the computer. Someone had been a blessing to us. So you have to understand something important, that whenever there is a need in the house of god the need is coming why the reason why the need is coming in the house of god is because god is creating an opportunity for you to be blessed jesus is not poor but the bible says jesus became poor that we may be rich how him being poor he was creating a platform for us to connect with him there is a man of god who is highly anointed but he doesn't have five dollars if you give him five dollars he's going to cry why you have blessed him and removed this anointing the reason why god creates this platform is for you to be blessed i have a son we in need of computers our live session will not happening well my son called gabriel from chicago he bought us a computer for us to go live like this and we are all hearing perfectly and tremendously obviously god will bless him in a mighty way why? Because whenever there's a need in the house of God, God creates it to bless you. We are raising money for a building right now. Someone will say, ah, why should we give them? Why can't they just say rent in a small place where they were doing services? God is expanding us to expand you. Right now, I want you, everybody, to go to the website and give the best you can. And this is how you will follow the outer. Number one, when you give on outer outer can be a place mainly a person let me be your outer today once i become that outer to you number one you give sacrificially that is why outer does not have an amount you give according to what you want to receive it's something that pains you it can be a car it can be a house it can be money someone emptied her own account to give for a better change. When I started working, I didn't have anything in my account. And I was alive and I was praising God. Why should it be hard for me to empty what I had known? I never had an account. If I empty it, I'm still the same person. But the devil will hold you and say, don't sacrifice. Start your altar today. Right now, go to the website, prophetperson.com. Let it be your place of altar, that website. Donate your donation right now whatever is your sacrifice step number two you have to maintain your altar that's step number two Acts chapter number two from verse 42 says they gave daily in the breaking of bread in the breaking of bread 
in the fellowship and in prayers. They gave daily. They gave daily. Understand this. They gave daily. I'll read it again. It says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. Breaking of bread is revelation. Why? Bread means adorner. And adorner means bread or revelation. Number two, fellowship in giving. Fellowship is giving. Number three, uh, prayer, which is spiritual warfare. Right? And they gave on the feet of the apostles. The Bible says, number one, they did not lack. Why? They gave daily their possessions, including their land, their houses, their money, to an extent that even when Anania and Sapphira did not give, they died. Lack of giving brings death in your business. It brings death in your house. It brings death in your marriage life. It brings death in your prayer life. Lack of giving introduces death. Ananias and Sapphira, they died because they lacked giving. Right? The Bible says they gave daily. They gave daily. And the Peter answered Ananias and Sapphira and he says, Why did the devil enter you to lie against the Holy Ghost? Meaning the man was not coming to Peter. Your money is not coming to me. It is going to the Holy Ghost. Why did the devil enter you? Lack of giving, it means the devil has entered your mind. He is influencing you. What will you do if you give? Don't give. Don't do this. Don't do this. Remember I told you, no spirit comes to you without an instruction. The spirit of poverty comes with the instruction, don't give. If you obey it, you maintain poverty. But if the spirit of prosperity comes, it introduces giving. The spirit of anti-marriage will introduce you to have sex and start living with a man who is not your husband. The spirit of marriage will tell you to close your legs and maintain the instructions of the angel until you are married. So the spirit you obey its voice is the spirit you maintain. So to maintain an altar you need to service it each and every day. That is why Acts chapter 2 says they gave steadfastly daily daily they were giving daily now if it is in the month of september it's the ninth month i give nine dollars every day if it is october i give every day ten dollars if it's another revelation to you if on the first you give one dollar second two dollar third three dollar fourth ten ten dollars so twenty twenty dollar on the fifth thirty first thirty one dollars if it is with the $10 that represents the month, you do that. You continue with the blessing of the day. You continue with the blessing of the day, servicing your altar. That's why the Bible says, God bless the Lord, I give him. The Bible says, and uh, uh, the Bible says, someone gave, I forgot what, the, what I wanted to say. What was I saying? They gave daily. All right. The Bible says, uh, redeem the time because the days are evil. In each and every day, there is an evil that is released. Why is evil released? Is it released to hold your breakthrough, to tempt around with your breakthrough, to make sure you will never break forth. But the devil is a liar. Zimbute Andela Talondo Lundala Masite. Dan dan de catos a boleca diacorandes ele membros que de bicandos ranto protosoto prakejo la viso prante qui da baiento bless you Ruth proud of your offering maricoto sante prakados qui ende le bedia sai every one of you who is my son who is my daughter I need you to sacrifice Rebecca mo mo mohinga bless you for your offering everyone who is my son who is my daughter i want you to give your outer right now everyone who is connected to this minister whoever only follows us on facebook and periscope give your outer now and pray to god whatever you know that is that has been holding you for years for months for weeks for days break it today get your stored you have suffered for seven years take a bull with seven years Monday, Cabrasi da Bande le Crege di Gabunda Cadea. Faleno Soto Branta Cadai, Kedebain Carosi da Baha. I'm going to play Kingdom Come Song. 
and we are going to give. If you're giving, don't give without naming your giving. Don't give without naming your giving. Name it. For example, Gideon was told, take one bull with seven years, representing the suffering that the nation of Israel have suffered for seven years. Take another one for, from your father's house that represents to break the generational case from your father. Take another one for yourself. Oh, Rabasata, William Higgs gave a huge offering. Male Darakada. Oh, Rambasata, uh, I need William Higgs. Motuso Seume, bless you. I need William Higgs. William Higgs, if you can hear me, uh, text our office phone right now. I need your personal number. I need to, to call you. Your seed is huge. I'm definitely going to pray for you myself. Abre Matida, bless you for your offering. So he took these three kettles and he sacrificed them differently. Why? Because you have to name your seed. This is for Israel. Done. This is for, 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 for my father's case to be broken. Done. This is personally for me. Is, is done. You cannot give a seed and say for marriage, for breakthrough, for money, for what, for what. Every seed on the altar shall, shall come with a name. This and whatever you name, you control. Begin to sacrifice now. Make your sacrifice and pray and cry to God. And you witness the mighty power of God. Play the kingdom come as people are giving and praying. Begin to pray everybody. Shatala Haskia.
Kristo na makwangu wa marete kepo sante retishka mereketo satambe na kutanda radaba kushangwa pereketo prakatosi talanande ndili ndili dabaka kukunga masende lekida bruanda kadea rento prata proto koko 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 hushiki bande brikante dikuzambai bende stakabindai badi banto kratonga krente nemende lebedi ya kota la masende reketi ya kota bronto Braka konka masiki kiki kia na mandere de bebiana masonte. Injula mandele kido bonde. I derindanda denderendende dindiri idiri da bakakumambe. In the name of Jesus, I empower you out. And I seal you out in the realms of the spirit. From today, let it become your spiritual portal. Let heavens open for you. Bless you, David Sinsenin. I pray that the grace of the prophetic rest upon you. The blessing of the Almighty, the anointing of Jehovah, aki bandere krantos hali banju masi baba hasikades. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see people are still. Rachel Goromonzi, bless you, people are still giving. Malendere debosa. Mandea. Parete posata. Rando prasande, prende brosata. Rande kosonde le debo shakabaha, mindele debo satabaha. I have one instruction before I leave this live right now. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, Angela, care for your big offering. That's time you bless you for that. Uh, what's today's day? Twenty. Twenty nine. Today is the 29th. I want you to I want you to to follow this instruction. Uh, if you can follow this instruction since today is the 29th. Find a $29 offering and I want you to give it and start servicing your altar from today. Believing and knowing that with the power of giving all is well with you. I want you to find a $29 and you give and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I give my $29, I'm redeeming the time because the days are evil. I'm redeeming the time because the days are evil. Tomorrow I will continue to give you five steps that are connected to outers. Five steps. That's, that's the, the, the knowledge which I inquired over the years. I've been in ministry since 2003, leading my own branch in my brother's church since 2003 till now. And all that knowledge that I had in those uh, 16 years of doing ministry, I want you to learn from what I did. I have sacrificed, I have built altars, and it worked for me tremendously. And I'm gonna be sharing that revelation with you tomorrow so tomorrow we'll be back here if possible in the morning i'm not sure with the time but we'll just uh, make sure you follow put an alert on our facebook or periscope when we go live it will let you know uh, so those that can uh, we are going to play a video for our mighty transforming tongues find a seed of 29 dollars 29 dollars and sacrifice it and seal your day redeem the time of the days are evil. I pray that you hold on to Acts chapter number 2 from verse number 42. They gave daily. Bless you, Zeluya Gaito, for a $29 offering. Zelu is one of our good daughters in this ministry. God bless you. And I want you to I want you to, to always move with that scripture. Always move with that scripture. Always move with that scripture they gave daily so we are going to play right now and as we play something is going to happen prophet passion benny hill the minute the spirit of god fills your life dr cindy dream praying tongues singing tongues 
Kenneth Hagen. He fills your life and the next thing you find is Pastor Chris. You will know. And Rodney Howard. God will. Mighty Transforming Tongues by God's Generals Part 2. Fire! Ronde Kista na Liga Barakouja la Mande. Set! Run! Run! Run with the move of God! Run with the move of God! Run! Elama Sukoro Revive! Elama Sukoro I'm going to move to the right. The anointing is going to shift economics in here. <laughs> I'm moving all the way straight. There's a W. I'm moving on a road written W. As I'm moving all the way, uh, uh, there's a left hand, but I'm turning right. It's written Airport Road. Airport Road. I'm turning, I'm seeing a place, it's written Walla Walla, Walla Walla, Walla Walla, Walla Walla. That's where I was from. That's where I was from. Runde Kista na Liga Baracoja Lamande. Tegos of Fremida, Andre Dega, Asto Jo Ramiro, of Prestigious. La Rosopte, Gino Practice, La Grosse Parahades, Li Grosse Shoba. I decree and declare that the spigot is open. Now, Father, like a tsunami, I decree and declare that you are going to begin to move from my right and left. I decree and declare, Father, that you would move from the front to the back. Father, as I move across the stage, I decree everyone, hallelujah, that sees me as I move will be slain. And you will birth, you will birth. Father, they will pick up mantles in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare right now that as I move across the stage, hallelujah, economics are going to be shifted, finances are going to be shifted, I decree and declare that the wealth of the wicked is no longer laid up for you, but the wealth of the wicked is being released, I decree and declare that winds of the spirit are beginning to blow, and they're blowing into your home, I decree and declare that your sons and daughters, by virtue of the fact of your praise, you are going to birth them into the kingdom, You are your sons and daughter are going to be birthed into the kingdom while they're in prison. They're going to be birthed into prison while they're in crack houses. Your husbands are going to come back. Your ministries are going to turn around. I decree and declare a supernatural anointing sweep. Father, from my right to my left as I move. Everybody open your eyes. Here it is. Mighty Transforming Tongues by God's Generals Part 2. ProfitPassion.com Visit our website today. Partner with us. Visit our website and partner with the Prophet today. Passion.com 
visit our website today. Visit our website and register one-on-one -on -one with the Prophet today.